Not T Swift just hitting us with some chunky little lines here. Hey, it's Megan. Welcome back to On Writing. If you're new here, I'm a professional writer and writing coach. I teach writers all about the writing process from start to finish, as well as looking at what we can learn from writing in different kinds of media. Today, we are looking at another song from Taylor Swift's Folklore album. So let's see what we can learn from her. And I'm playing the explicit version. Gosh, coming at me for my clean version videos. It was an accident, okay? I'd meet you where the spirit meets the bones. Faithful okay, opening up with some interesting what the heck is she talking about kind of lines. How's one to know? I'd meet you where the spirit meets the bones. Ooh, ooh, what? Ooh, where's that? All right. For me, this makes me think of somewhere deep inside you, like literally where your spirit meets your bones. That's where they would meet. So it's there's some deep connection there. It also makes me wonder if like where the spirit meets the bones feels kind of spooky and graveyard-esque, you know, like that's where bones are and I guess spirits too. In a faith forgotten land. Well, the reason I think it's a real place is because she says in a faith forgotten land. So I feel like she's talking about somewhere less so than somewhere internal. Not T-Swift just hitting us with some chunky, little lines here. It's a land where faith is forgotten. So does that mean faith as in like religious faith? Does that mean faith as in just faith in love? I mean, I view it as like faith as in faith in something bigger than ourselves. So if that's forgotten, then maybe everything that has to do with that is out the window. There's nothing that you need faith for or you've forgotten how to have faith. That's interesting. I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts on that. In from the snow, your touch brought forth an incandescent glow. Now that I've been listening to more Taylor Swift, I can't help but notice all the similar words she uses throughout a lot of her songs. Like across the Lover album, Cruel is used quite often. Incandescent Glow makes me think of Afterglow. And I know so many of you have pointed out connections between songs in my comments, and I just think that's really cool. So in from the snow, your touch brought forth an incandescent glow. I love the pictures she's painting with these words. And again, that's something so important to think about when you're writing is word choice. What words are you choosing? What pictures are you trying to put in your reader's mind? Because you have full control over that, really. Maybe not in how they think about every single detail of your story, but certainly some of the most important ones. And the words you choose can have a direct impact on what your readers are picturing or imagining. So in from the snow makes me think, I mean, I don't exactly know where they're at. Are they in a house? Are they in a cabin? Are they in a tent? I don't know. But they're in from the snow and snow makes me picture just maybe it's dark and it's cold. It's very bare there's not a lot of color, black and white. Maybe not black and white, but you know what I'm saying. And then the fact that it's a glow, it's not warmth, like we can imply warmth, but it's an incandescent glow, so it's it's light, mostly. Interesting. And the old widow goes to the storm every day, but I don't, I just sit here and wait. Ooh, interesting. What is happening? Tarnished, but so grand. So that actually goes with the last section. So let's read it all together. In from the snow, your touch brought forth an incandescent glow, tarnished, tarnished, but so grand. Ooh, okay. This is cruel summer vibes all over again. Like there's something good about it. It's grand, but there's something not good about it. It's tarnished. Why can't anything just be good for her? Oh, okay. I know this isn't about her, but for any of these characters she's writing about, why can't it just be good? Okay. I guess we get that in Lover. It's fine. All right. Tarnished is an interesting word too, because it almost gives a sense of it's ruined. It's not like old or worn out or weary. Tarnished is sort of like something has rusted or something has lost its shine. Something has been been out too long. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's still grand, but it's tarnished. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Then this part, I'm like, what are we talking about? The old widow goes to the stone every day. Oh, this makes me think she is talking about a graveyard. Oh, yeah. did I get that right? Come on. Stop. Okay. I shouldn't get ahead of myself. Maybe, maybe I'm still wrong. The old widow goes to the stone every day, but I don't. I just sit here and wait grieving for the living. Okay, so I'm gonna say that she's she's in a graveyard. The old widow, so widow implying that she's lost her husband, goes to the stone, assuming a headstone every day. So the old widow's paying respects to her lost husband 
every day, but this girl doesn't. She's kind of comparing herself to this widow. So is she a widow? She just sits here and waits, grieving for the living. So she's sitting in the graveyard, maybe looking around at the headstones and thinking about how sad it is that so many people who are still here are grieving people that they've lost who are now in this graveyard. I'm assuming she's waiting for whoever's touch is bringing forth an incandescent glow, but okay. Taking mine, but it's been promised to another. <laughs> okay, snap. Okay, the plot thickens. Mm, sister be making some questionable choices. Okay. <laughs> Faith for God maybe makes more sense now. Mm. She says, my pain fits in the palm of your freezing hand. Is he dead? Hold up now. Is he dead? Because, wait, but his his freezing hand, but his touch brings forth an incandescent glow. Is he dead? Because dead people are cold. <laughs> dead bodies. <laughs> dead bodies are cold. But he brings forth a glow. Is he an angel? Okay, hold on. So either her pain is small enough to fit in his hand, or his hand is big enough to hold all her pain. I don't know how much pain she's in. So, <laughs> taking mine, but it's been promised to another. So her hand has been promised to another. Let me just make sure I have that connection correctly. My pain fits in the palm of your freezing hand, taking mine, but it's been promised to another. So again, the it's. We always wanna make sure it's clear what our articles and pronouns are referring to. This, that, it's, he, she. So my pain fits in the palm of your freezing hand, taking mine. So the action there is on his hand taking her hand. So his hand is still the subject, but it's been promised to another. So actually I'm thinking, is his hand promised to another? My pain fits in the palm of your freezing hand, taking mine, but it's been promised to another. Yeah, okay, yep. I think his hand has been promised to another. Thanks for watching that whole external processing that just happened. The house of stone, your ivy grows, and now I'm covered in you. Oh, I can't stop you putting roots in my dreamland. Oh. I like that phrase. Mm. So there is something, like if they're having an affair, then her being with him would seem kind of dreamy. Like it, like it's not actually gonna happen. They'll never actually be together unless he leaves his partner. But he's putting roots in that dream. So every time they're together, it like firms up her desire to continue to want that, to dream for that. Her house of stone, that's interesting because now stone, stone is coming up a couple times. The old widow goes to the stone and then my house of stone. So maybe Maybe she's connecting herself to the old widow in that regard. Like there's something similar about how she feels and how the old widow feels. That's just what I'm wondering about. But his ivy grows on her house of stone and now she's covered in you. Which is interesting because the ivy is growing on the house, but she's covered. So is she also the house of stone? Is that a metaphor for herself? I don't know. So it's kind of like the snow and the incandescent glow. You get something that feels cold and unfeeling and like monochrome with the snow and the stone, and then you get something that feels more lively, colorful, warm with the glow and the ivy. So that's a cool little parallel. The fatal flaw that makes you long to be magnificently cursed. I wish to know the fatal flaw that makes you long to be magnificently cursed. Who is this character talking to? I'm assuming it's this person who whose ivy is growing on her house. I mean, what I'm thinking with this line is she wants to know maybe what is it about him that's making him choose to do this? And I'm using him again. I guess it's not. Oh no, she says him. Like what makes you long to be magnificently cursed? Because if you're having an affair, you kind of are cursed. And I guess it's a magnificent way. I don't like that, but you're magnificently cursed because you're kind of in love with two people, perhaps, or you're at least in love with the person you're cheating on, cheating with, cheating on your partner with? <laughs> Prepositions. And then, and so, but you're cursed because you can't really be with them. Oh, mm, gross. So she wants to know, like, what is it about you that makes you okay with doing this? Is that what she's asking? What do you guys think? That's what I'm getting from it. Opal eyes are all I wish to see. Then we switch and she says, he's in the room. Your opal eyes are all I wish to see. He want, wait a second now. Hold the phone, hold the phone. Is she, she's the one, is she the one cheating? Who's cheating? Are they both cheating? Maybe they're both cheating. Those little scallywags. He's in the room. I'm guessing she, she must be, either he's, 
I think they're both cheating now. Okay. Someone tell me, are they both cheating? He's in the room, but your opal, your opal eyes. Opal eyes? Really? Opal eyes. This is a pet peeve of mine, but when writers are like, his amethyst eyes glistened in the moonlight, it's like, okay, his amethyst eyes, like, just say blue or just say eyes, you know? Anyway, opal eyes that would look so weird. Has anyone ever seen an opal? They're like full of specks of different colors and they're mostly white. That would be so, so weird unless, unless he is a ghost. And so his eyes might look creepy like that. I'm not throwing away that conspiracy theory yet. Okay. He wants what's only yours. So she's committed to this graveyard guy. She's committed to this dead ghost man <laughs> who creeps Ivy all up her house. She's just in love with him. She doesn't want to be with her partner anymore. All right. <laughs> she is the one cheating. Why did, but it seemed like him in the beginning too. Hmm. I'll have to listen to it again and figure that out. But clover blooms in the fields, spring breaks loose. Ooh, I love that phrase. That is so accurate because you ha you see buds on trees for so long at the end of winter and then all of a sudden it's like they just break loose into their blooms. I like that. The time is near. What would he do if he found us out? So why is the time near? Why now that it's not winter anymore, something's shifting and there's greater potential for this guy to find out about their illicit affair. Coast is, clear. Coast is clear. That's funny. Ooh, interesting. Crescent moon, coast is clear. I like the double meaning on coast is clear. Spring breaks loose, but so does fear. Mmm, that's a good juxtaposition because spring breaks loose and that's new life, that's beauty, nature, ivy, and so does fear though. And fear is like retreat. It's not, it's not good. It's not good, no. He's gonna burn this house to the ground. That interests me because the house is made of stone. That's really hard to burn a stone house to the ground, which either means she's wrong, he's not gonna burn it to the ground, or he is so mad that he will find a way to burn that stone house to the ground. For moments that we stole, unbegged and borrowed. I'd live and die for moments that we stole. Good use of that verb. Yeah, you stole it. You did. <sighs> Sorry, I'm pulling it together. On begged and borrowed time. Mmm, mmm, interesting. That makes me think maybe there was a little bit of back and forth on like convincing someone to engage in this affair, but also borrowing time. You're kind of borrowing time from that person's partner, which is so icky. All right, it's just a song. It's just a song. It's just a song. Or dare to sit and watch what will become. So tell me to run or dare to sit and watch what will become. So that that kind of um, makes me think about the begging line. Moments we stole on begged and borrowed time. And then she's like, dare, you know, I dare you to sit and watch what will become. So it's sort of, I don't know, there's there's begging and there's daring. There's some kind of convincing that needs to happen or, or has happened before. Yeah, so they're like, how's, how's one to know? Our time seems to be running out, so either tell me to run right now, or you know, let's let's see what happens when this all comes to a head and implodes around us. What? So yeah, it's a fire, it's a goddamn blaze in the dark, and you started. Well, that's interesting. It's a fire. A blaze in the dark and you started it. That has two meanings to me at least. It's a fire, a blaze in the dark. Again, it's like that incandescent glow coming in from the snow. And it's, he's, he's like lit a fire in her life. So that makes sense. But then the fire also links back to me, at least in my mind, to the stone house that he'll burn down. But that's the different guy, right? That's a different guy. So he started the fire. So he initiated the affair. Does it connect to the fire in the stone house? I kind of want to think it does, but I might have to listen to this again and figure that out. It's a war. It's the goddamn fight of my life and you started. So it's, it's a war. It's the fight of her life. That's pretty intense. And you started it. You started it. So she's blaming it on him. Like, this is your fault. Our life is probably going to implode around us and you started it. I can't stop you putting roots in my dreamland. 
your ivy grows and now I'm covered in you. So it's sort of, it is a sense that he's perpetuated this. He's the problem, but we all know there's two people involved in this, but yeah. The other cool thing is that ivy is sort of, I don't know if it's classified as a weed, but it's, it's really beautiful to look at, but it can be quite unruly. And so the fact that her house was stone and then the ivy started growing and she couldn't stop it and now she's covered is a great picture, a great metaphor, or maybe analogy of now she's, She's in too, she's in too deep, you know? She's, she's covered in this. She's, she's, there's no getting out. You need some sharp shears to cut that ivy. Interesting. Okay. So what can we think about for our own writing projects as we look at this song? I think this is a great example of hinting, once again, at things without being too explicit. So she never actually says where she's at, but she hints at it. Spirit meets the bones. The old widow goes to the stone every day, grieving for the living. So she's giving us a picture where we have to infer. We have to do all of the work, pretty much, to infer what she's talking about. This this song is all very in her head. It's not a lot of action, it's more reflection. And whenever you write, you wanna always balance your action and reflection. So have a couple lines of action and then have your characters reflect on it. Have something happen and then show your reader what they're thinking about it, what they're feeling about it, and you'll have a nice balance there. This song is pretty much all reflection, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I just love it when writers are able to hint at things, but we still get the story. So good. That's the best. That's that's good poetry. Okay, well that was Ivy. I'm really excited to hear what you guys love about this song and what you take away from the story and how you interpret it. If you want content like this a little bit earlier than the rest of the folks, you can join my Patreon or you can also join my YouTube membership below. Otherwise, it was so good to see you today. Thanks for watching and happy writing.